Hi there, Laura here from Get Organized HQ. And just like I did last year, I gave you 23 items to declutter in 2023. I'll put a link to that video below. But this year I wanna give you 24 things to declutter in 24. And all but one of these things is actually different, okay? So these are 24 new things that you can declutter this year to make sure you're starting your year off without a bunch of junk that you don't need. Now these are gonna be in no particular order. Here we go. Number one, items that are waiting for repair. So this can be like clothing that you think you're gonna to take to be altered or that's missing a button or like a toy that's broken or anything that needs repair. If it's waiting for repair, I want you to give yourself a deadline, like maybe January 31st. If it's not done by then, it goes. Because what you don't wanna do is have it sit there for seven, six, eight, years or more waiting to be repaired you never do it and then you throw it out if you're not gonna repair it which is fine it may not be worth it to you then just go ahead and get rid of it number two expired makeup products and I'm gonna include in here beauty samples so there are a lot of makeup products that do expire so like you're not supposed to use mascara that's three years old for example so make sure that if something is expired that you get rid of it if you don't use it anymore that's fine get rid of it or I know from buying beauty things online, they're constantly sending you samples or you get this free gift of like 24 sample products whenever you make a purchase. And some of those items I try and I like, but some of them are just like not my thing. For example, perfumes. I do not wear perfumes. They give me a headache, they give my husband a headache, just not gonna wear them. So I can just pass those on immediately. Or I already know what foundation I like. I do not need to try more and they're usually not in the right shade. They're always too dark. So I don't need those. So Go through those samples, only keep the ones that you are really, truly going to use. And for this, I actually did some research online for you to come up with a general consensus of how long you're supposed to keep each type of makeup. And the first one on here really surprised me. For mascara, it's three months. I'm gonna tell you that I keep it for closer than a year, but they say for peak performance, three months. For lipstick, it's two years. For foundation, it is one year. Now, I don't have any problem with this because my foundation gets used up in like one month. I wear it every day. For eyeshadow, it's one year. And for concealer, it's one year. So that's just a rule of thumb you can use. And if you know like you have concealer that's like two or three years old, just go ahead and get rid of it. Number three, and this one's gonna probably get a lot of you, myself included, I want you to get rid of items that you are hoping to sell. Like, were you hoping to have a garage sale someday or that a friend would have a garage sale? Did you wanna sell them online on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or wherever you sell stuff? If they have been sitting in your home for months or years and you haven't sold them, I am going to give you a little hint here. You probably aren't gonna do it. So just get rid of them. And if you really do, if you're like, no, I really wanna sell this, then give yourself a deadline. I must have it listed by January 31st or it is going. And don't even look in the box. If you haven't got it listed, it's going. I don't want you, again, to sit, sit with it for like seven years and then end up getting rid of it. Number four, extra storage containers in the kitchen or storage containers that do not have a matching lid. If it doesn't have a lid that goes with it, you're not going to use it or vice versa. If you have a lid that doesn't have a container, you're not going to use it. There is no reason to have it. Or if you have like 52 different types of storage containers, get rid of some of them. Only keep what you can carefully store. And as a bit of advice, when you are acquiring storage containers, more of the same type is going to fit better and look more organized than a huge variety of a bunch of different types and sizes. Oh, number five, and I'm definitely guilty of this, we're going to turn our attention to the digital world. Unsubscribe from those emails of products that you don't love. So if you love the subscription, if they give you good advice, if you actually like buying those products and you would you want to know when they're on sale, then stay on the list. But there is a tons of stuff that like I signed up for, like I went and bought something, you know, one time, maybe it was even a gift, not even something I'm interested in. And you know how they're always asking for your email address and they'll send you emails. And then I'm like, I am never ever in my life going to buy something for phishing again, you know? So unsubscribe because you unsubscribe once, that's gonna cut down on the email that's coming into your inbox for the rest of time, basically. So go ahead. I would encourage you to sit down right now. Just take out your phone. I'm gonna guess you all have a phone. If you're watching this on your phone, wait till the video is done. Find five emails you can unsubscribe from. I bet you can do that in like less than a minute. And then every day when you're checking your email, I just want you to ask yourself, 
Are there any of these that I need to just press the unsubscribe button? Next up, number six is sticky notes. Now this would include it, like unused sticky notes, so you've got all these different kinds of sticky notes. It would also include sticky notes that you've written on and have stuck everywhere. So sticky notes are great. I love sticky notes. We have sticky notes in our shop, which I absolutely love because they are color coded to our actual brand colors and to our goals in our planner. Love that, but it can still be too much. So especially if you have sticky notes kind of stuck randomly everywhere, in notebooks, on surfaces, on your computer, this one drives me nuts. I do not put sticky notes on my computer. It's gonna look really sloppy and you're just gonna walk in there. Like if you sit down at your computer and you've got like all these sticky notes, you're gonna feel kind of overwhelmed. Like there's all this stuff kind of shouting at me. So I want you to get rid of them. Now, if there's something on there and you're like, okay, I have important stuff on my sticky notes. I can't get rid of these ones that I've written on. Then what I want you to do, get yourself a notebook, take them down from all these surfaces and just place them in a notebook and go through them when you can. But let's get rid of all the sticky notes that are just randomly in, in wherever. And let's also get rid of like, you do not need 82 sticky note pads. I mean, how long is it gonna take you to go through those? So you can pare those down as well. This one is a little tough for me, but puzzles. I love puzzles. We do puzzles all the time. But when I looked at my puzzles, I realized there were some that now that my kids are a little bit older, they're just kind of like not our level anymore and I can pass those on. If there's puzzles that you just didn't love or that are broken or missing pieces, go ahead and get rid of those. And for me, I like to keep a steady stream of puzzles coming in and going out because if I start bringing puzzles in and then we add those to our collection without getting rid of them. It's just going to grow and you can't possibly do, you know, 82 puzzles in even a month or probably a year. So go ahead and pare down the ones that you don't love. Number eight gets me a little bit as well. Books that your family doesn't read. So I love books. I love to read. I love books for my kids. My kids love to read. I love to read to them. They love to read by themselves. And we just have like a huge collection of books. And this year I finally went through them and I got rid of some. Uh, I probably should have gotten rid of more. I will admit I'm a little guilty of this, especially with kids' books. For me, I, I don't mind reading them on like Kindle or audio, but for kids, you know, especially the ones with like, you know, you can lift the flaps and it tell you things. But again, if you or your children or your family is overwhelmed with this selection and there's so many that you just like don't know which ones to read, you're not gonna enjoy them as much. So go ahead and pare down if there's any that you've outgrown. Or sometimes I get a book and I just, for whatever reason, we don't love it. That's okay. I'm gonna pass that on, so see if there are any books that you can get rid of. And number nine is any old tech, like old phones, computers, iPads, things like that that you don't use anymore. I did this this year, I cannot believe. I let these like big iMacs in their original boxes take up space for like three years in my home and I finally took them to the Apple store and you know what, we, we got like $800 from those old machines. Now not every single one, like we had one that was so old, they're like, it doesn't have any value, like we're just gonna recycle it, but they'll still take it, even if it doesn't have any value. Um, and other stores like Best Buy and things like that will, will also trade things in. Now again, not everything has value. It has to be a little bit more recent, in, in working condition, but like see if you can make a little money. I mean, that's pretty easy money, things we need to get rid of anyway. So if you can, great, but even if you can't, you don't need those things sitting around, what are you gonna do with them? And I will say for this one, this is the reason I kept them so long, I thought I might have some, what if I have a file on there that I need? Like, now I do these days try to save everything in the cloud. I try not to have things on the desktop, but I'm like, what if there's something? What if there is something? Like, what am I gonna do? Turn it on and like look at every single file? Like, I, I didn't really have a plan. I was just like, well, well, what if? And if there was a file that I needed, I don't even think I would think to go look at it. It literally takes 30 minutes to turn it on. And I also finally let my, uh, some of my wedding footage go. Uh, because I was like, look, I, I, I will not even turn on this computer to watch it because the computer was so old and so slow and I might be able to get it up within like 45 minutes, like literally. And I'm like, it isn't gonna do anyone any good. We can't watch it, so I'm gonna let it go. So I encourage you, if there is a file you need, set aside time, like literally take out your calendar if you have it on your, you know, your calendar on your phone, if you have a physical calendar, take it out right now, pick a time, this is the when I am scheduled to open up that computer and take off anything I need and then go ahead and get rid of it. Number 10, cookbooks. Get rid of any cookbooks you don't need. I've definitely gotten rid of some this year. These days, almost any recipe can be found online. And when I go to look for a new recipe, if I'm like, okay, I'm tired of the same chicken dish, I want something new, I'm 98% of the time not gonna go to a cookbook, I'm gonna go to my phone and just search. So there's a lot of cookbooks that I don't need anymore, so go ahead and get rid of any of those cookbooks that you don't love.
Number 11, get rid of any dried up or old clay or Play-Doh, especially when it comes to kids. Um, we sometimes get like 20 open things of Play-Doh and over time, even if they're not completely dried out, they get really hard to work with. Play-Doh is cheap and easy to replace. So go ahead and start with a clean slate, get rid of any of that and get some fresh Play-Doh that is actually easy to use. 12, many of us probably have candles in our home that we don't use. I personally get some home decor subscription boxes and I usually do use the decor, but every once in a while it's a candle where I just don't like the scent. Either myself, my husband, someone in my family doesn't like the scent. And in, I should probably just immediately get rid of it, but instead I let it sit on the counter for like a year or two and then I'm like, we're never gonna burn this. So if you have a candle that you don't love, or even if you just have 50 candles because you love candles, go ahead and pare it down to a reasonable amount. And I like to say, I'm gonna keep the number of candles that I think I can burn within the year. So go ahead and declutter whatever candles you don't need. Number 13, we're gonna turn our attention to the digital world again. We always talk about decluttering photos from your camera roll that you don't need, but I talked about that last year. This year, I wanna talk about notes in your notes app. Do you have like 150 notes in your notes app that you're like, oh, I'm gonna need that someday? Well, newsflash, if it's note number 149 and you entered it three or four years ago, you're not gonna find that thing anyway, so you need to declutter your notes. What I encourage you to do is, I would again, you're watching this video, you have some time, just take out your phone and try to find five notes that you don't need. And then every day, take about five minutes and delete another note that you don't need. And if there is information in there you need, like maybe you, you wrote down information that you will need to refer back to, um, go ahead and put that where you can actually find it. Like for example, last week I was at an event and they gave the dates of the events next year. So I just took out my phone like anyone does and put them in my notes. But now when I go through them, I'm gonna go ahead and take that information I'm gonna put it on my calendar. That way I can actually find it because even if in a few months, I'm like, oh, when were those dates? It's gonna be really hard to find in the notes app. So I wanna make sure that you have a system for that information. So go ahead and delete the notes that you don't need. Number 14, this is another one that I'm pretty guilty of, and that is any kind of storage bins that you don't need. I actually have a whole video on this that's gonna come soon. If you're watching this after I have it up, I'll go ahead and put the link to it. Otherwise, be on the lookout, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. It's coming fairly soon. But I have an entire video on how to decide which kind of either storage bins, like for long-term storage, or even like organizing bins, how to get rid of those. Because I'm kind of a collector of those things. And I have like 50 million different kinds of storage bins, in case I need this, in case I need this, what about this drawer organizer, what about that? And instead, I want you to go through and look at those things, and if you have anything that is old or broken or that you just don't like, like there's something about it you don't like, you can easily get rid of that. If you only have one of something, I would encourage you to get rid of it because you kind of want matching bins usually. So go ahead and see if you have some old storage containers of some kind that you can get rid of. 15, I'm putting this on there for my own accountability, is dead batteries. So you know how you're not supposed to throw batteries in this trash. So instead, I have a bin of dead batteries and literally I have no idea what are you supposed to do with dead batteries? I mean, where are you supposed to take them? Like, I've never seen anywhere that's like, here, give us your dead batteries. So I, myself, am going to go look up where I can take dead batteries and just take them instead of letting them, you know, just get these huge amounts of dead batteries and not know where to take them. So if you're the same, go ahead and Google for your area where you can take them. And bonus, if you set yourself up with an annual appointment to go drop them off wherever that is. Number 16, do you have any old gift cards? So I have this thing that when I get a physical gift card, you know, I'll, these days, a lot of times I'm entering it on an app. So like I get DoorDash gift cards a lot and I'll just enter them on the app and then the credit is in there. I don't really need the gift card, but I feel this like compulsion to save it until I've used it. I don't know, I don't know why, just in case something happens. And so, um, but then what happens is when I do fully use all that money, I don't go back and throw away that gift card. So go through your gift cards, make sure they're entered into all your apps and that you've redeemed them. Or I have a random gift card over here, like I have a William Sonoma gift card in my nightstand right now. And I've seen it, like I see it every night. And I'm like, I really don't know how much is left on that. I know that there's something, I know that I've used it, but I'm like, is it $5, is it $15? So go ahead and do yourself a favor, collect them all up, search, you know, see if they've been redeemed. If so, trash them. And if not, like write on the gift card or make yourself a note of how much is left so you can start taking advantage of those gift cards. And number 17, speaking of gifts, if you have any unused gifts that have been given to you 
a long time ago or even that you just got for Christmas, because it's now January. If you're not gonna use it, go ahead and get rid of it. This is one that I think gets a lot of people because you think it was a gift. I mean, I should use it. And you almost feel this like guilt of getting rid of it. But the person who gave it to you, they wanted to give you something that helps you. And if it's not your thing, if you're not gonna use it, go ahead and pass it on to someone that will. And you can still appreciate the thought behind that gift. So don't feel compelled. I don't want you to take your Christmas presents from this year. If there's something you know you won't use and hang on to it for a full year before getting rid of it. Just go ahead and pass it on if it's not something that you'll use. Number 18 is receipts. Get rid of receipts that are laying around that you don't need. And little newsflash here, you actually don't need very many receipts. I used to be this person who just kept all of my receipts. So I had like these, I don't know if it's elaborate, but I had a whole entire filing system for my receipts. And I would keep like if I went and got gas. If I went to Aldi and I bought groceries, I kept that receipt. Well, here's the deal. Why do I need my gas receipt? What am I gonna do? Am I gonna return the gas? I mean, that, that, that's not even a thing. So I, I have no idea. Like, I cannot imagine a scenario in which I need this receipt. And it's gone through on my credit card. So I have a record of that purchase if for some reason I need that. Same with food. Like once I've eaten the food, there's really no point in it. So you may need to save fewer receipts than you think. Now there are, of course, times when you need to save a receipt. I will save receipts where um, I think I might return the item. So for example, clothing, you know, if I got something for my child and I'm not 100% sure if it fits or something like that, then I will save those receipts until we know that we're gonna keep it and then I let them go. So when I'm only saving that many, it's easier to manage or for tax purposes, if I'm buying something for my business, of course I'm going to save that receipt, I'm gonna do it digitally. Um, I have an entire course on how to go hybrid paper and paperless at the same time. So I'll leave the link to that below if you're interested in maybe this year getting your whole paper system more streamlined and going a little bit more paperless without diving in all the way and thinking, oh, I'm never gonna be able to use paper again. But I want you to take all those receipts that you have sitting around and clean those up and I think you'll feel instantly better. Number 19, get rid of any extra wrapping paper or gift bags or things like that. A lot of us, tend to save those things. And I even remember this like Friends episode where Monica was like ironing the wrapping paper. Okay, I'm not that bad. But I do like, I'm like, oh, we might use this gift bag someday. Let's save that. And so for Christmas, if you got gifts, you probably did save some of that. That's okay. Like, I think that's wonderful. I do actually reuse some of those. But I want you to have a system and I want you to have a container. So what, like, we all have the classic gift bag full of gift bags, right? Like you take the biggest one and you put all the gift bags in there. That, that's fine. But that, that large gift bag is your container. Once that is full, you have, you have two choices. You can either just discard or pass along all the, the new gift bags you get, or you can go, if you wanna take this time and look through it and be like, I actually like this gift bag better, I'm gonna substitute. But you can't just like keep letting the collection grow and grow and grow to the point that you're never gonna use them. So get rid of any extra wrapping paper, wrapping supplies, gift bags that you're not gonna use. Number 20, get rid of any paper or plastic like grocery bags and bags in the store that you save thinking you might reuse them. Uh, I myself just have this habit of like storing, keeping them all. Like I might need them, maybe someone comes over, you know, like you never know when you're gonna need a plastic bag. Every time I travel, I actually have a cosmetic bag of plastic bags because so you never know when you're gonna need them. However, what you don't wanna do is have them overtake your pantry and fill up half your pantry. So what you need to do is we have this one space, we have this one like cube in our pantry. Anytime I get a bag, I put it in there. When it is full, I discard the bag. I do not keep it. So if you have excess plastic bags or paper bags, go ahead and get rid of those. Number 21, I'm also guilty of this one. If you have any single earrings that are waiting to find their pair, get rid of them. If you've had them for more than three months and you haven't found the mate, you're not going to. I mean, like literally, I have never had a time that I have found, I'm trying to think, like, did I have a time? But I don't think I've ever had a time that after a year or two, I actually found the mate. This is especially true if the earring is just mediocre. Like if it's nothing special, just get rid of it. Don't just hang on to them waiting for the mates. You could say the same about socks as well. Um, get rid of those and only hang on to the ones like if they're extra special and you're like, yes, I would be thrilled if we ever found the mate, then go ahead and do that. But other than that, get rid of those single earrings. Number 22, I want you to right now Get rid of any donation boxes that you had sitting around. And this is one that I think gets so many of us that we, we get donation boxes and we don't take them to wherever we want to donate. So go ahead right now. If you can't do it this second, then put it in your calendar. This is when I'm going to take donations. And as a bonus, if you want to set yourself up for more success this year, 
then what you could do is go ahead and put a time in your calendar every three to six months when you're gonna do that. Number 23, so we only have two more to go. This is the one thing that I actually repeated from last year's video because I think it is so important and that is any store returns. So you order clothing online, you order stuff from Amazon, wherever, and you need to return it. This is especially true after Christmas. Go ahead and do that now. Number 24, get rid of any instruction manuals that you don't need. A lot of like, all sorts of things comes with instruction manuals, like big appliances, even little appliances like your crock pot and your instant pot come with these big thick instruction manuals. You don't need them. They can all be found online. So if you wanna make yourself feel better, search for it online, bookmark it, and then throw it away. So if you enjoyed learning about these 24 things you can declutter, you will love last year's video, 23 things to declutter in 2023. I will leave the link here and down below. Go ahead and watch that next.